I want to discuss a couple of things with you all. Before we bless, bless you all with this uh, good meal that we provide for you all each and every year. I want you all to understand that this right here is a hub to network, reunite with one another, brainstorm. I like to call it our think tank. We get into our season, as you all know, the annual um, alumni weekend is the last weekend in June, but it takes a lot of work leading up to that. So we have fundraisers. Um, we do a lot of community service work. We were fortunate enough this year to kick off the alumni weekend and we donated uh, hygiene kits to COTS this year. Um, so we raised over 300 hygiene uh, kits uh, to COTS in conjunction to all the stuff that we do in the current school. So we are very visible in partnerships with like Reach Back and Give, the Goby Group. Um, so we're just trying to give back into that 48204 community. Um, but I would like to share something that has been my vision since I took on the leadership that um, is looking like it's going to come to fruition, but I'm going to need the alumni to get behind us, not me. Us, uh, I, I, I can't get on that 45 just because they say we the people, not me the people. And that's how he's operating this country right now. But it's going to take all of us to be able to get this next project uh, how many of you all like um, coming home or coming to the alumni facilities on the grounds of the old school? I love it. So the vision right now is, and I'm going to get into a presentation. Lisa, if you can, pass out those sheets. What I have in my hand right now, I was trying to set up a PowerPoint presentation, but unfortunately the devil's going to the details. Um, that cord doesn't align with my cord in here, but I bought hard copies. So, um, what our committee members, Lisa Carter, is going to actually pass out the sheets to you all to actually let you know what we've been working on. And one of the things that we're working on is that the Alumni Association, in conjunction with all the alumni, that's when we came up with Stag Nation because we're a nation of stags. We want to purchase that land. Uh, I'm doing it um, there's talk, but we got to come up with a proposal, and we got to come up with a capital campaign. And that capital campaign, for them to actually take us serious, uh, we got to raise about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So I think that with all the alumni members that we have, um, I believe that we can. And I think that when we brainstorm on how to raise this money, and just to let you all know too that we are a nonprofit organization. We are official 501c3. Uh, we have to stay level now. The next phase when we kick back up the end of this month is to go at the federal level. So our funds and anything that you donate to us will be attacked by us. All right, so these are some of the areas that we have to work diligently in. Uh, once you get in, everybody yeah, we get, get your seat. We can get I'm going to go through a couple things with you all. So we do ask for memberships. We're back in our membership drive. It is $15 for one year, $25 for two years. That's the use of uh, the membership card, your admissions to the picnic, and your parking pass to the picnic. That's what you give with your membership. I am. Membership, when do you give as we, before we move up, move forward, I would like to have our legislative board of directors stand so you all can actually them and if you have any questions, if you're on the board of directors currently, can you please stand so alumni members can actually see you all. So, we got A.J. Adams, former chairperson for 10 years. We got Miss Gloria Cunningham is somewhere behind here. Noted, uh, one of the noted founders. We got George Fowler. Big muscle ride out here, you know. Big dog! 
Rico Brown, got IT Beverly Tinsley, Lauren Kennedy now, uh, you got Sheila in the back, and Kimberly. I don't want to miss anybody uh, and myself. Oh, you have Kenny Loman, he should be coming in. We have Pearly Faulkner that's a member. Um, Deborah has joined us, uh, Rogers, as of uh, last year also. So we have some active folks here. I got Benita Glover. Um, so as Randy Henry always saying, I believe, Keith Bennett and George, we have fused the seasoned generation with the new generation. And as you see, this movement is really moving. Um, so as you can see what we've been doing on the, on the field, I believe we're the only school to have jazz on the line. I love that piece at our uh, picnic. Uh, big thanks to Miss Lisa Carter. She's taking on the kids home. So I'm a visionary. I'm going to let you all know. My vision is to actually make that corner each year look like the state fair. So you might see an amusement thing at the picnic with the kids on that year. So I want to maximize all that space over there with the old baseball, diamond, everything. So we want our folks to come back home. I know we took a dip in 2011. I don't really like to talk about that because our numbers are growing. But anybody that you know that uses that as an excuse, let them know to come back home. And that has changed. Many of you know that we partnered up with Wayne County Sheriff's. So this past year, they was riding bicycles on the field, playing football with the, the children on, on the field. So it's a lot of positive things going on for us, and the energy is real. So those of you that have this sheet, as you know, I just opened up, you know, with the kickoff, introducing of the board of directors, talked about the membership, recruitment, what can you do, and, and where it needs assistance. I believe you see those blue cards, those are information cards. So if you want to be a part of the subcommittee, because we need you all, you can be a part of the subcommittee. If you have ideas, only thing we ask is that don't be those alumni members that's always saying, y'all ain't doing this, y'all ain't doing this. Come to a meeting and offer your suggestions. That's all I like, because we catch that a lot. But the Mighty 12 always show up, and 7,000 folks come on the field. I don't know how much that work we put in. I, I want to give a big shout out. I know he had a football game, but Coach Tom Brown is a laborer, so he's part of our committee too. And he's up early on that field doing logistics, and he's one of the last ones to leave. If y'all don't know, we've had to actually build fences several years to secure that field because our cousins you know, the night owls like to come out and take stuff from us. So we own a fence that we bring out every year to be able to secure our events. All right, so Coach Tyler Brown is essential with that. We got another major project that I'm gonna let George announce after I finish mine in terms of if this thing moves the right way, of having classes purchase fences. And you can design them however you want, and we'll be closed in to the public once you get in, but 72 can have their own fish, graffiti up, 90 can be over here, they can be memorials of those that passed on or something, but once they give you that presentation, I'm gonna tell you it's a great idea to be able to secure that. Also, sponsorship opportunity, that's a big thing that we've been actually looking at pushing the last two years. And jazz on the line piece, we pay for that. And as a nonprofit organization, I would love to see a major corporation come in and sponsor that. And, and that's our very own. Those artists graduated from McKinney. So I'm, a, I'm really serious about keeping that network within ourselves. Now, we choose to expand, but at the same time, owning that as us. So these are some of the things. Lashawn Gary is a member of the class of 86. Black Lake Dennis Lindley came out in 95, if I'm not mistaken. And they've been very active and been wanting to be a part of those. And there's more artists out there. And I'm turning artists down that's calling us to perform with us from out of state because I think that we have major talent here in the city of Detroit. So 
Uh, and I would like to, I'm just gonna throw this change plug. I would like Randy to produce the movie on the kids like he did in the second. <laughs> Documentary. I, I, ours is better than the Rucker. I ain't gonna lie to you. So, uh, so what I what I spoke to you all about in regards to securing the land, I'm gonna need the alumni to get the word out that we are actually on a campaign drive to raise two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to make an offer, and we're gonna have to actually make a proposal. And I really want to make that proposal before the end of this quarter. So I, I have, we have been fortunate. Enough to, uh, I want to say, uh, be in good courtship with those because they actually, at DPSCD, they have been working with us after we had to show up and show out at a meeting. Uh, was that last year, year before, at Murray Wright? Because they was trying to shut us down and we, we went pretty deep and spoke to the Board of Education. So now they take us real serious. And we were one of two of the alumni associations that they understand that we're sovereign, we own our own finances, they can't really control us. Control us. We're going to tell you, they have started an umbrella alumni association through DPSCD. And uh, we pushed back away from it. I attended about four meetings. And I was very insulted about some of the things that they did. They hosted a meeting at the kids, the new kids, and he didn't even have us on the agenda. So I spoke my voice on that, and I really had some issues with those at the table. But we don't need them, they need us. And that's at the end of the day, and that was my message at Murray Wright is, you talk about partnerships, but then you want to eliminate the partnership, but they want to control everything. And you can't do that. So. We took care of Hamburg Field for 20 plus years. We've been paying everything out of our pocket as an alumni association at 9200. What is it? They got four addresses right now. 9200, um, Wyoming, 9275 with the old school. Um, what is it now? 9400. There's a lot now that since it's torn out. But we've been paying everything out of our pocket in terms of landscaping, quarter jobs. What else we have out there? Uh, dumpsters, custodial teams, everything, security, all of that is we turn out in this alumni association. Golf carts, cart, everything. So when they talk to us, they have to talk to us correctly. And they're understanding that we're serious about what we want to do. So like I said, Ms. Venable has been very, very, very going to say compromisable in terms of giving us what we want. And even in our negotiations, the last two years we had to lease the field for DPSCD. And the number that they threw out at us at first came back. And we got it at a very low cost. And then we only pair for four security guards or police officers for DPSCD that they required for us during that time. So I can work with that. All right? Um, how many of you all are aware that we have a website? Yeah. Where's the hashtag signs at, Lori? Lori has the hashtag sign on it. It's our official website. You can pay your alumni dues there. You can see all the upcoming events. We manage that website regularly. So if any events, class reunions, I think the class of 74 did their class reunion. Their pictures are up there. Every event that we have, we pretty much try to um, shoot, update it as fast as we can. Once again, dues are $15 for one year, $25 for two years. That comes with your membership card, admission to the picnic, and you get a parking pass for that year. All right, so it is www.detmh. SAA.org. If you just put in MHSAA, you're going to go to the Michigan High School of the Athletic Association. So that's why we got Detroit in front of it. So you pull it up, you can actually see it and take care of everything on there. Then we take all credit cards, PayPal, we got a cash app now. So 
No excuses. We can uh, we can use the support. Alumni phone calls. That's another thing that that's needed. That we started out. I, I picked the focus group, but we need you all to be calling downtown to Dr. Vitti's office or Ms. Venable's office and let her know, let them know that we are serious about purchasing that land. I can get that number to you all before we leave, uh, but they said the more we call, because they're in a, what is a moratorium right now, they're not releasing any properties through DPSCD. But if we start calling and we talk, start discussing how interested we are about that land, they'll go doc, straight to Dr. Vitti and he'll release those properties. Um, all right. Can we email them? You can email them. I, I, go overboard. That's what I want to be doing. All the time for an email. <laughs> so these are some things that we're actually looking at when it comes to that land. George, what is it? I think. I said, I don't see. That land is what, 25 acres? Yeah, 24 Somewhere around there. Around 25 acres. There's no land contract. It's an outright purchase. Uh, so things on our behalf that we want to purchase, the DPSCD is not going to purchase it, we're going to have to purchase the appraisal. So that's why this fundraising campaign is going to be needed. So there's a lot of different things that we need to actually do. Uh, and we want to look at the city of Detroit's appraisal process versus the DPS appraisal process too. And then we want to keep that hardball thing in for the uh, bids that's going on. So, I also, what I was talking about when it comes to alumni dues, we are exploring the ideas. Hopefully, we can reveal that in the near future, a lifetime membership. I hear CAD has lifetime memberships, but our thing right now is juggling when you talk about lifetime memberships. We're looking at life expectancy and where do we start that at. So, it's going to be 20, 25 years, I have that going to benefit. Once we get into dealing with numbers, and we want to be fair with everybody, so we don't want to just put out a blanket number out there. And as we all know, life happens. Okay. Um, I know Sheila has some things that we're gonna probably reveal in terms of purchasing bricks or what is that idea you had, Sheila? Said commitment for the bricks. So that's just an idea, one of them. So, like I said, we all are here. If there's any ideas that you have that you know that are successful, I'm open to it all. My thing is, if we try it and if we don't succeed at it, we go back to the drawing board. I don't believe in pointing fingers, none of that stuff, because we in this together. So, once we do that, just give it to some committee or give it one of our committee members. And my other thing is that if you're going to suggest it, I'm going to support it, but I'm not going to do the work. All right? If you suggest it, I'm going to support it, but you got to do the work. I'm not going to do the work. All right? You got to own it. All right? So here's some of the things. What? What? Once we are granted the opportunity, because we've already claimed this land, the idea is to make it a community park. So we want to make it a walking park. We want to be able to allow the school to be able to have access to it because we are still dead in the kids. We can't late. Just to clarify some things that was clarified to me in the air that, you know, they opened Barton back up. And allegedly, allegedly, it was supposed to be an elementary school or a pre-K school in the field. The kids still has K-8 in the field. So we try to figure out what's the future plans and work. But I know that the kids, had 1,300 students, and that they went to the school and built for 1,300 students. So, um, I am in contact with Mr. Drain regularly, the current principal over there. We just donated over 500 school supplies with the book bag drive. We had a car wash in August, and they were very elated about that. So, great job. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. So, with the community park, like I said, the vision is to make it a walking park. We got ideas of taking over the tennis court, the basketball court. Uh, bringing in some partners to actually 
build into that community. You know, I, I don't think that would be hard once we are granted the opportunity to get the fish in the land or even some of the tennis association folks to come in and actually see what the vision is uh, for that. That parcel. Also talking about farming, just giving some skill sets to those children in that neighborhood. And also, we're looking at community block club users also. So if you look at it, I just spoke in terms of securing endorsements by the Detroit Tennis Association to assist the repairing the tennis courts, lessons, tournaments, securing the Detroit business to repair the basketball courts, three, uh, three on three tournaments, alumni pickup, games. This is, this, is, this is a lot of the different things that we can do. Um, if the alumni gets a board on what we're trying to actually secure, and even getting with the Detroit Golf Club. So as that goes on, if you all look on your second sheet, like I say, I'm about networking with us. I know that we have lawyers amongst ourselves, so lawyers are needed, appraisers are needed, developer layouts and landscape designers, community, uh, advocates and support and coordinators I need. That's basically my spiel in regards to the vision. i like for you all to network amongst each other before you get out of here. Today, I do want to introduce the lady that's going to be working with us. She's coming to our first meeting uh, to put us in the forefront to be able to go federally with our 501 C3. I'm going to come in. And I've been working with her behind the scenes, and she's going to introduce herself. Yeah. This is what she does. Uh. Thank you. 